So giant, confusion takes a hold of me. Then I forget who I am, but I don't forget whose I am. I need restoration, hanging on for dear life, looking for how I could escape here. I've been a dad with great fear, picking up pieces from my pieces. I've been shattered many times, and they wonder why I'm sleepless. But please don't leave me speechless. I made my prayers always reach there. I can move mountains when I speak to you. Yeah. No matter how far the jump I lead to. Can't keep me from it. No, no. I've been down and I've been twisted. Oh Lord, get me lifted high above the stars, where there's no limit. Oh Lord, get me lifted. Yeah. The hardest thing to deal with is to move without feelings. Seeing signs on all sides, but don't know what your will is. Don't know what the real is. Feeling my back's against the wall. Seeing all of my mistakes, and I desire to fix them all. But without you, it's impossible. From my insides, I will call, but then it don't even ring. They all say how much you love me, so how could it be? That you would let me destroy myself, I need saving from me. And when they write inside my book, use my tears as the ink. So they can testify on me, all I did to break free. And to glorify your name, I get back what you gave to me. I'm falling down, so can you lift me? Yes, we are here for our 75th Amuna class. We do not have the honor of Rev. Dine Algod in the studio. We're going to dedicate this class. I have the name right here on my phone. His name is Rev. Dine Algod and Sholem Ben Shoshana Baylor. Should have a full shlema. Fortunately, he was in an accident this previous week, and I just got notified by him himself. So we're dedicating this class. He, please, God, will have a comeback hopefully in the new week, and obviously our wonderful host, 
of Sholom ben Yamna. That is a big focus. But guess who made it, who was a surprise last minute guest, who very kindly obliged in the previous week to join us. Our holy brother Nissim Black is in the studio. So <laughs> we give a, if we could have like cheers and <laughs> applause, we'd have that sound effect. There are some cheesy podcasts that do that. You know, they have, I don't know, Joe Biden like stuff. Thank That's you, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Rav El Grasheva before Shlema. Amen. Shalom Ben Yamna. Rav El Grasheva before Shlema. So we're really excited today because even though we miss the Rabbonim and we want them to be here more than, more than we don't, but... Since this is the reality, and since we always are about Muna and going with the Rots and Hashem, we're going to focus on a new flow from Nissan Black. We're going to hear what, where he's at. It's been a while since he came by. Last time he was here, we did a wonderful song, Lifted, in the studio, and it's, thank God, got a lot of good energy on our Hebrew channel and English channel, and now he's already re released the official version after Lag Boma. But I'm sure there's been so much more going on, uh, as well as his podcast and music, and also we hear some great sounds of uh, upcoming documentary or sort of <laughs> how you're going to have to explain it to us. You know, I, I didn't, I, actually, I mentioned it in our classes that you're doing something great like that, but I didn't want to give any, you know, sort of false way of explaining it. I wanted it to be from the man himself. And today we're going to get that kind of uh, um, wonderful exclusive word from Nissan Black. And it's very big Saturday Shemaya that today's class is coming out on a special time of year where we're sort of in between, you know, we've had the Sphira days, we're not in the three weeks, thank God, yet. We're sort of in this, like, see them to Chodesh Nissan. It's a special time with the summer approaching, and it gives us opportunity to, thank God, to get ready for the coming new year, which it, it really comes fast. So well, let's just give everyone a big blessing for a healthy, energized summer. Everyone should be healthy. We should be safe from any forms of illness and corona mm -hmm. challenges mm -hmm. or any kind of travel issues, everyone should be able to get around. Oh, I myself this week going to Amsterdam, excited to go there, the Simchas, and please God, people should just be able to move around and get done what they need to do with health and happiness. The next yeah. point is we want to give a big thank you to all our feedback, all our wonderful followers, you guys, who every week, not only do you say wonderful things, but you also ask questions and make this class very real. We've got over 40,000 views in the last few classes, each of them, and even one are heading up 60,000. It means a lot to us that you guys are watching and sharing. And so let's do some feedback. Thank you, Rev Elgrod, and everyone, your team, for the advice of peace in the world. It helped deal with the current challenges and prepare for the summer months the best way. So that's great feedback. Shalom Rabbeinu Orish. Beautiful advice. I want to say it's very true because we see the miracles of the Creator and can see differences when you are reading the Psalms 100 every day. Uh, that is another one of uh, Rav Orish's wonderful campaigns, Ms. Mola Soda. We reposted that. Chokah Toda. Yeah. Ms. Mola Toda. Yeah. Thanks for the correction for the Ashkenazim. Yeah. We need that Swadi warmth. We mentioned that last time. I was talking to Dr. Epstein, our previous guest. We'll mention that in a minute. And he, we had a joke that a Sephardi guy came up to us in Uman. We were all being very Ashkenazi. Do you remember this comment? <laughs> we were all getting all very heavy with all our, like, you know, cheshbonus, our thoughts. And he comes up to us, a nice Sephardi guy, as we're by the, uh, you know, the coffee place, and says, Atem Ashkenazim? We said, you're, you're Ashkenazi? We said, yeah. He said, Rafur Shleiman. <laughs> Rafur Shleiman. And I was like, Amen. And I understood what he meant. It wasn't, God forbid, anything like negative. He just meant it from love. And we need to have that full healing of not being overly too busy with our thoughts and just be a little bit more Munah Shuta and Tamimus like Rabbeinu wants. Shana, anyway, let's go ahead. So Ms. Molasodi, say uh, Psalm 100 eight times. And that's the Rav Orish's wonderful advice. Tadara Barra Bain for showing a beautiful video. Cookie Monster wrote, Peace and love to Israel and to the whole world. That's on Jonathan Belayish's class. Thank God we're being able to post a few of his every week. Cookie Monster also wrote, Love and helping with Chuva. This message is good. It resonates for sure. I'm really enjoying these beautiful glasses. Someone else wrote, Great Sheer. Dan Cohen wrote, The goal is so, so soulful. Thank you, Doctor, for the reminder of the power of being here now. Josh Crow wrote, thank you, Rabbi, for this teaching. May Hashem bless your life. Someone else wrote, thank you, Rabbi L.E.G. Cynthia and Will Smith wrote, so a little more, so much. I'm not going to just give a like. There's so much more than this. I'm going to give a love. And that's what they did. 
Someone on um, Ben Shapiro's podcast. Uh, um, no, it actually wasn't Ben Shapiro. It was a Meaningful People hosted Ben Shapiro. No. And they wrote, I just realized Ben Shapiro needs Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. Well, that was a funny <laughs> comment that I decided to bring here. <laughs> he needs Hasidus in general, someone else wrote. I don't know. I, no, he, he, he's doing pretty good. No, he, no, no. So, yeah. you know, the referencing, been, yeah. I, I actually seen the podcast. And yeah. ben, uh, ben is a sweetie, but he was very, very... Um, He's very open and transparent about his yeah. trouble that he has with the feeling. That's true. And so he went on to say inside of this podcast that his his troubles with the feeler is the fact that it's rote. And I'm saying the same thing every single day. And it's very, very hard for me to connect to that. He said a few other details, but this was the most of the what he was saying. And, and he said over there that it's something very hard to keep saying the same things over and over and over again to Shim and expecting... Sure that you're going to be able to feel very, very connected to it. So, um, so the same thing that that person just commented was the same thing that I thought, same thing that my <laughs> wife thought was the same thing is that he needs to be inter- introduced to, to his boat of this, you know, and I only been needs Rabbeinu. We all need Rabbeinu. We need that. We need Reb Shimon. We need the Tzadikim to be able to show us as the, the Ramchal says that they, they, they stand at the top of the maze and they guide us, out, out the way. So well, we need the tzaddikim for sure. So Ben just doesn't know he needs the tzaddikim. So <laughs> he was challenged on his tefillas. I haven't been able to talk to him. Uh, well, the, the <laughs> interesting point is if you can I directly give him feedback about it because he was open to right. hear more about it. Right. And through the meaningful people, I think right. also Yaakov Langer's podcast as well. It came up as well. Inspiration for both, the nation. Yeah, also, right. both of those podcasts. There was a mention of this point, and thank God we have our Muna class because that's really. Being a student of Rav Oresh, you know, Nissen Black definitely has a, a Masoira, mm-hmm. a tradition from the Breslau, of a tradition to go ahead with the importance of prayer. And we're going to discuss that very much today, I hope, especially about loving everyone unconditionally. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a big focus of today's class, with the new flow, even though the Rav spoke about it months ago before he was unwell. Uh, but it's something which needs his, his chaskus. And, and this is a concept from Rabbi Nachman that you have, and Dr. Epstein mentioned it last week, you have to constantly begin again and again with every avoda. You can't just rely on the energy from months before. It's a constant, it's chadsh, it's a renewal, and that's what we're going to do today with Nissen Black himself. It's going to help us with that. So uh, hopefully Ben Shapiro, if you're listening, and uh, <laughs> Meaningful People and Yaakov Langer, take note, and uh, hopefully it will help with the inspiration towards prayer so that was only the uh the comments on their video thank you dear Ablazer, for these wonderful share hashem bless you greatly from a b'nai noach amuna group thanks for having me hashem bless us all and that's it thank you hashem for giving us our team and um, we really hope for Abdina got to return soon thank god for these classes i'm going to go ahead with nissen black i'm not going to give an intro I think that would be uh, unnecessary. <laughs> so let's just go straight to the first question. And I think it's a hard one. And the question is, I'm stuck. Yeah. Right. I, maybe I need a Makubu, a Kabbalist. Yeah. And right. uh, I know this person. I'm not going to say details. Other than one of the things I know they're stuck with, I think, is Shaduchim. I think right. that's really where they're having the most trouble with finding their soulmate. Right. So uh, if we could just give help rather than suggesting... Uh, you know, different how, how can we help right. them directly? So, so I, I, th- I think it's a, it's a question that comes across a lot of people's mind when they, uh, in, in many different facets in life, uh, whether you're struggling with Shidduch and Panas, you can't figure out what it is. Now, first thing is that the person should be very, very happy because the reason why you should be happy already is that you, you've come to the, to the point of knowing that it's only Hashem. So you didn't seek out that there was going to be some type of physical means. You want to go to a person that's a tzaddik, someone that's a representative of Hashem. So that's already something to be a simcha about. Look, that already I'm not attributing, you know, my my lacking whatever it is, especially in ruchnis. I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm not attributing my lacking um, of that fulfillment of that desired thing based on some type of physical thing. So the first thing is that we have to be happy that we believe in Hashgaka, Hashim's Hashgaka. So the second thing is, is that a person should always know that the the way that the tzaddikim lead us and the holy people, the righteous people lead us to Hashim is by way of coaching. 
They were never here and never intend to actually do the work for us, but they're actually here to have lay out a blueprint for us to be able to walk through the same exact way. So going to, uh, you know, a Mekubal and a Kabbalist, uh, someone that's very, very um, well versed in, 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 in the different Olamos and the different worlds, is something very great. I want to tell you something I heard by a very, very great Mekubal. Uh, his name is uh, Rav Ichimai Morgenstern, Baruch Hashem. I've had the opportunity to also come close to him over the last year or so. And I was at one of his classes, and he was speaking, and uh, and he was talking about very, very deep things, very deep in Yanam. He was bringing it up, and he was talking about entering into the to the different rooms, if I could say, basically relating to the Sphira and talking about going into this world of Keter. Anybody that knows Kabbalah, they'll know I'm not going to give any extra explanations and he said that a person that knows the proper yehudim knows how to enter into all these different worlds they know how to make you know these things now it already sounds complicated i'm sure <laughs> so but he said that a person that has the power of his bodhidus has these this simple uh 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 muna to be able to talk that shim in one's own words he says, this person enters in through the rooms with the axe. They break down all the doors. They're not using any keys. They're breaking down all the doors. So the, the, the truth is, is that each one of us was supplied exactly what we need in order for us to be able to receive whatever you're sure that we need, whatever it is that we want. It's not to say, not to go to rabbis, not to go to big people. But the thing is that I've always had the approach with Rav Rosh is, is, is my love in my heart. But I generally would never come to him and ask him a question unless I worked it out for a long time in the fields, talking to Shim about it, talking to Chaverim that I'm very close that also are very, very, um, um, very, very involved in the Indian of, of coming close to Hashem and trying to work on themselves. And then only after I've really worked it out will I go to Ra. And and, and a person, you know, especially when it comes to something like Shiduchim, we don't know the price of what these things cost that we really want to achieve. We don't know how much effort of prayer uh, and crying that Hashem requires from us. And, and and at the moment where a person feels like they, 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 they just want to give up or they're looking for some other solution, that's the time to really turn it up the next time because we know for sure that that's one of the main tricks employees of the other side is to stop a person and make them feel defeated. So I think if I will go that way, I heard a beautiful story just really quick before we go to the next part. Uh, the, the, the Rav himself has said many years ago that uh, someone had come to him and said that, you know, he, he, he wanted a bracha because of, because of eye and horror, because of the evil eye. People were looking, looking upon him with the evil eye uh, that, you know, because of that, he was having trouble with Parnassa and whatever Hatzlaka success that he wanted. He was having trouble with it. That particular person, Arav said to him, D -d do you keep Shabbos? Do you keep, he's like, no, I don't keep Shabbos. I don't, I don't keep Shabbos. He says, I don't know if I and her is the problem. I don't know if the evil eye is the problem, right? So sometimes we look for extra spiritual thing when really Hashem is just desiring that we talk to him more and we pull out more. So I don't know if a Mekubal or Kabbalist is the is a solution. Not saying that it can't help, but at the time where a person's feeling major tsar, you just don't want to overlook your your tefillas and your power that Hashem already gave you. Wow. I do want to ask a question on top of that, and your answer was really important. I was th thinking in a similar line, but you really explained it very well, and I do feel that it's one of the blessings of having Rav Oresh as as a teacher is helping us understand that we ourselves have the power of prayer, and, right. and not to, I mean, I heard Gedalia talk very strong not to just run after Mukobalim and Kabbalists, not that they're not, so some of the legit real ones are not holy and helpful and needed, but it's just, it's very important for us to, to run to Hashem. Like, right, right. To really have that, that focus on our... And this is what Hashem yeah. wants from us. Hashem wants from us to, to come in, 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 and to talk to Him. And even a person that, you don't know how big your prayers are. You know, the, the Kabbalists and the Kubal and real tzaddikim, they're, they're by Hashem, they're in His office every single day, right? What would it look like for us who are not in his office every single day to really let out a real cry and we bust in the bust in the office and the shit? Sure. You don't think he's going to stop what he's doing over there to take care of us? So we don't understand the impact of what our prayers are as simple people who are crying out and looking for whatever you're sure that we need, what that's going to do when we actually take it upon ourselves to actually dive in, to cry out to Hashem and to, and to bust into his office, so to speak. Well. Wow. So one of the things I, I feel very honored about, and it's going to be a question to you, Nassim, mm -hmm. I feel 
one blessed to know you as a person i was just at a recent program called awesome students and they wanted to hear the story how i met you there's other things as well but it was amazing you know the journey of and uh just the fact that we've been friends for all these years and i've seen what really has stood out for me personally and this is a big compliment and but maybe it's not a big compliment maybe it's just reality but uh, this is how i perceive it and my wife as well and we're talking about it that you've really gone to a very real place Mm -hmm. with your music and your journey and it comes over now when you're talking publicly and in the new songs as well and i mean i'd love to hear more news about that but that without getting to the external level of how you know the plan and what you're going to be involved we'll get to that hopefully at some point today but i want to hear also like on the inner level you mentioned from from your your rabbi of morgenstern you know mm-hmm. his holy mukubo this idea of hikolis and there's there's worlds and you said you don't really know but on some level i feel like maybe there is some insight that people can get that they do have inner worlds that they don't know about right. and that there is this whole journey within that people are unaware of nowadays and it's a shame because they they always go to run to like a psychologist a therapist in some cases they need to but they're not enough and, and i know this myself that people aren't doing enough of the inner work the right. inner connection right the soul level the the spiritual level. so how can you help us like believe in that more to know that that's really the true reality what the, what the sadiqim are talking about is not is not just ideas it's it's the actual ms it's the true emet of life right so i think the the biggest thing is is how the person starts. You know, you, you go to a beautiful shear and you hear the rabbi say beautiful things or the rabbitson or whatever. And there's, there's, there's generally, there's many different types of people, two, two types of people in general that hear it. And, 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 and both will get inspired. But one in particular just, just really is inspired at the moment. Even if they have just somewhat of a thought of putting it in their head, but at some point they say, yeah, but this is still a little bit above me. You know, this is a little bit above me. And you have the other person who is inspired. And when they hear it, they want to do every single thing Whoa. that they heard immediately. Right. And and I think the balance may be a little bit, a little bit in between. But I know from me myself, you know, talking to a lot of people who are from from birth, they grew up religious their entire life. A lot of these people, as you know, struggle um, um, with religion, um, and and it's and and they have a different struggle than what a Balshuva will have or what a Gerd Sedek will have. But one of the things I've noticed more than anything is that there's somewhat of a a a I don't know like a veil over people's eyes to where they hear all these beautiful things and they've heard it and all these things for so long that it it hasn't become real to them, right? As opposed to where a person like me who came from the outside looking in, everything that I read about, I just wanted to do. People ask me, was it hard to keep Shabbos? Was it hard to like when you start? No, the moment I fell in love with the Shim, my my fire inside, my heart was burning to come close to Shim so much that it was so... Easy. I was looking for the next thing I could do or not do, right? In yeah. order to be pleasing to Hashem, right? And because, and nothing was ever, you have to, it's, uh, you get to, you get to. So, because I was dealing with Hashem directly. So, it's a much harder in some, in some aspects when a person is raised in the sense of, you have to, you have to, you have to. And they have to rearrange the relationship with Hashem to a place of where you get to, when everything becomes a you get to. And to go on a deeper level when a person starts to get to know themselves is that, this takes a lot of time spending spending a lot of time with the shim and 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 it's one of those things that happens automatically even if a person goes to shim for some you know medial thing they I, I don't know they want their favorite soccer team to win the you know the world series i don't know what it was the, the cup i don't know i don't watch soccer so i don't know what what happens at the end um so but then in the end the more and more person goes to spend time with the shim i always say you take two good friends yeah and you allow them to spend a lot of time together. What you'll notice is a lot of different similarities between them. Even if a person knows them, you know, they have a mutual friend, they don't know that they know each other, it would be something about that other one that always reminds them of the other person. That's because they spend so much time together. Uh, and I joke about this, uh, you know, I've said this before, that some people spend so much time with the pets that they start looking like their dogs. I don't know if everybody <laughs> else has seen it. I've definitely seen people look like the dog. But, you know, something about this spending time with the with the other person that they start to rub off on you you start to rub off on them when a person sets aside time to go and spend time with the shim 
then you get to know Hashem, and ultimately you get to know yourself. And that power of influence, I'm, I'm pretty sure you will not influence Hashem. He will be influencing you only. And the more and more time that you spend with Him, these different things in, in, in Kochot, these, uh, how you say Kochot, these uh, Strength. strengths and, and powers and things that oh, you didn't, never even knew existed inside of you, they start to be illuminated and you start to go, wow, I, I believe in myself a little bit more. I believe in myself a little bit more. I believe in myself a little bit more. And ultimately, a person's immune grows just from this this building, this relationship with the Shem. It's the most beautiful thing. And the, and the, and the sensitivity, the hergish, the, the light, the fire, it's a completely different life. Anybody that knows this is really, really involved in, in, in making Hashem their best friend, as Rab Nachman will put it, is that a person goes out and spends time to and talks with the shim, and this what happens automatically is the shim starts to show you your own light, and you start to glow. Everybody will see it. It will only only be visible to you. It'll be visible to other people. That this certain this chain this this yeah. this favor shines upon the person, and 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 then out of that starts to come all these different things. So I travel a lot, and and I I have to go to a lot of different places that will put me in a lot of you know, un uncomfortable situations, I would say. I would say the situations are comfortable, but the environments usually are not always comfortable for me. And it doesn't take much. Uh, as much as <laughs> people see my videos and they hear I'm out there and stuff like that. Like my kids just saw my videos like a year ago. So wow. like that, you know what I'm saying? So uh, you can imagine what the, you know, what the home is like in, in terms. So I, I'm not as outgoing as I am. I would say even my wife is more wow. outgoing, but she's more close. It's like weird. And I'm more out. We balance each pool. other. We balance each other. Yeah. So, but I said that to say that it, because of that, there's a there's a particular toy from Reb Nachman that I always I try to learn every time I'm on the plane or I'm going. I think it's in uh, Tor 59, where it talks about when you're going out to be machar of other people. Everybody has problems. Everybody has some raw, some evil, everything that's attached. And in order for you to not allow, every, I got my own problems. I don't need anybody else's problems problems being attached to me person has to spend a lot of time and 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 he both a dude to be able to make sure that you know your problems stay your problems and all these these other things stay out that that you're going out because you're being around a lot of different people whether it's emotional disorders or there's there's actual you know spiritual things contamination whatever it is that person has to dive in and pray uh for for a long time in order that when they go out they'll be able to be protected by shim's fiery fiery angels mm -hmm. so so look, so we're we're experiencing these things. These are real time, right. like part of our journey, right. and and this is something which can help people understand that tefillah is real, prayer is real, so real, and it goes together with learning. It goes together with our daily life, our family. Now, one of the things that people would want to know, and I know for sure it's a question that will come up, now that your children are not growing up with the the search, and I have the same question myself, I was mm -hmm. about Chuva, I was a Gesedic, mm -hmm. now they're growing up from from birth, you know, right. inverted commas, I'd rather they weren't, you know, right. as Rav Talboy says, from from thought, they should actually <laughs> come to the Yiddish kite through actually, they're also journeying. Right. That's my hope, personally, that's my answer back, but how would you answer that? How Do you see them also going on their journey and also searching for Shem, or it's like they're just coming another yeah, from I, 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 I see both um, and yeah. I'm very very like impressed when I see see the other things but I, one of the things that I, I've learned um, is what makes the difference is that the children themselves are and this it starts at a very young age when you and I and I remember one time that me and my brother-in-law were just noticing it shout out to my brother-in-law Yosef yes, yes. Yes. Big, big Miss him. and that that our kids, when they got together and they wanted to play, they they make fake talises and tefillin and they dive in with a lot of slavas, but that's what they seen. And when I remember my kids were here in Shalom Benayim, like when we were still in Yerushalayim, in the, in the cheder here, that the Rebbe said, that your son Yaakov, he dives with so much slavas. And, and, and the thing was, is that he was just mimicking what he saw me do when I had taken the shoe or if I had to dive in at home or whatever. This is this is the way he saw tefillah, and, and and these are the things. And I thought about it as my kids, you know, are now getting older. The more and more they hear Imuna in the house, the more and more they hear, you know, me and my wife talking and praising the tzaddikim and having these conversations. So I start to notice my kids that they want to leave the table early. 
particularly for Shabbos or whatever. So we do is left me and my wife and maybe an older kid or two or whatever. So other kids, you know, they, they, they're interested in playing or whatever. So what do I do? I sit there. I don't, don't give over the very Torah. Even if you don't give a Devar Torah, kids don't want to hear Devar Torah. So what I could do and what I do is I just start engaging with a conversation with the Muna about, my, about it with my wife. Just words or just things that have been inspired me. She tells me when she heard in the she or I, I tell her what I what I learned. Or we'll grab a safer and, and this excitement starts to get up. And then the kids also want to come. And then they come back to the game and they start asking nice. questions and they start. And and I think that the the person doesn't understand. You know, we don't understand how much we need to be constantly speaking and Muna in the house. This is what the kids need to be hearing because really is going to come out to what what do you how much of, of what's going on they're spending how many x hours a day at school and and unfortunately no matter what the school is they're hearing all type of still them rubbish and everything else like that so and they may be even spending more time the older the kids get especially by the boys they're spending much more time in in yeah. the yeshiva than they are at home so what's what's yeah, it i mean i've got boys sleeping See, out already so, yeah. so so truthfully you almost don't have any time yeah. To be talking stam about nothing that doesn't have nothing to do with Amuna and Avodah Hashem because the only time they may be able to get something actually yeah. is by responsibility you outside parents. of the yeah. shear. So it, 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 it causes us to work yeah. on ourselves. But this is something that I see that the kids need to be constantly in, in this bubble of hearing about Amuna and, and Kivas Hashem coming close to Hashem and Tefillah. And so that's one thing that I've really taken upon myself to really work on with my kids. And I noticed it. And I said, uh, I had one is. thing, one of the points that I've, my wife and I've tried to bring, and I hope this is helpful for whoever's listening, is to bring the struggles that we go through also, like show, our, show a little bit of vulnerabilities right. and and how we've had to, you know, really work on ourselves to overcome a lot of the struggles. And we needed that Saturday Shmaya heavenly help or connection to Sadiqim to, to get us through those difficult moments. And, you know, right. one of the Torahs that really helped in my home and everyone enjoys hearing the stories is often Rabideman has amazing stories every week. He puts out right, the right. Torah's wellspring. There's also, um, you know, there's, uh, thank God, there's Chabad. They have all these sheets, you know, and then there's mm -hmm. Breslov have all their sheets. All these Torah sheets that can help, like, just begin the discussion. There's, like, an amazing story, and you give it over, it's probably of a Sadiq, and it helps get everyone in that focus of, the, you know, this is the av Avir, the energy of our house. But it's, sometimes it's difficult, but one of the biggest moments of Nachas that I get is when I see my children choose it themselves. Right, right. Right. And they actually are giving over. Like, right. they suddenly come to an awareness and understanding. I mean, I've got a bit older kids, older teenagers, and suddenly, like, they're by Kiv Ray Sadiqim, nothing to do with me. I never told them and right. to go. Right. And they're giving over Gemara that they were inspired by in a Torah concept. Right. <clears throat> or they're working on, on a Mido or something. And it's, it, that's really a lot of Nachas when you right. see it coming from them. Right. And not even from a Rebbe or anyone, from their own From their own, yeah, own initiative. So we'll get to the next question. I think this was an important discussion. Hope all is well, Ellie. I try to work on myself and my media daily. I find it very difficult with my personal prayers. I have the tendency to do things which are good and have a tendency to isolate and lose my amuna when things are not so good. Don't we all in some way? Mm -hmm. To the human eye, I'm a simple Jew that wants to share everything with Shem. When I complain, I feel guilty because I'm really blessed. There is pain, there are challenges. It's a fact. And I need to feel a Shem, which I do sometimes. Ellie, I don't know what to do. I feel stuck, cold of. So I'm not going to answer that even though they asked me. <laughs> I don't feel like right now the right mindset to answer. So we're going to ask Reb Nisim, <laughs> Nimer Ravorish, his, his Rebbe and, ta and his uh, our host here. So let's hear a beautiful answer. Um, so, Emunah is one of those things where mama shit, it, it waxes and it wanes. And, and I don't know if it's particularly the, the Emunah itself, or rather the, that the, you know, sometimes we have a, we have a hergish, we have a feeling of that closeness to Hashem, that sometimes when we're on a spiritual high, we feel it very much so. And sometimes we're in a state of like, uh, you know, uh, where, where it leaves or feels, or they call it Mokhan Dekatnis, where the, mind is somewhat is not able to grasp that beautiful light that we felt and we felt you know all the simuna so the question is what to do when you're down Reb Nachman talks about this uh, many other tzaddikim talk about this but of course Reb Nachman it, it tells us that to, to not be a fool to not not believe in the second that a shim has left you not to believe for a second that Hashem is not hearing you to feel us, that Hashem is not with you. Hashem is with you, and He desires every single word from you. And sometimes Hashem wants to, you know, it's like a baby who, who, who's walking, and you're holding their hands. 
and they're taking steps, they're taking steps. And the moment you just pull your hands back a little bit, a little bit, they get a little nervous, get a little nervous. But what are you doing? You're asking them to take a few more steps to come to you. And this is how Shim works with us sometimes. He'll pull his hands back and he'll say, take a few more steps, a few more steps. And we can't fall. Some babies will fall on the on the, on the the tukis and they'll start crying and start crying and start crying. But what Hashem wants us to do is t- keep taking a few steps because he wants us to learn how to walk. And so and and so that's sort of what it is like sometimes with the tefillah where sometimes it feels like I, I, I lost it and I lost my muna. But we have to work so hard. So another thing is that 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 um, I think it actually says in the Lekutei uh, Alachot, Rav Nassim says, I think in Choshen Mishpat, I think this Torah is, and it's it's based on the Torah of Lekutei Maran, Torah Dalit, where 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 Rav Nachman um, they bring over there that Paro his dreams, that when Paro had the seven years. Of, of good times. He had yeah. seven years of where it was plentiful, he saw, and then he saw that there was going to be seven years of, of famine. This yeah. is basically the interpretation of the dream that what we're supposed to learn from this is sometimes we have an aliyah. And so at the moment that we have this aliyah, this up, that we that we have and Hashem is we feel that close to Hashem. We have our munits flying. We're supposed to grab every single thing that you can and hold on to it as long as you possibly can. Rabbi Nachman says, if you have a hero chuva, you have a moment or a thought of chuva, don't move from the place. Take advantage of it. Stand in that place and to mama soak up all of that light because what happens generally after Aliyah is the Yerida. Not to stay down because Hashem wants to he wants a renewal. He's conscious. He wants that, that beginning love that when everything was sweet in the beginning, when you first ran after him in the desert, when everything was brand new, Hashem wants to reset that because he never wants us to ever come to a place where it's stale. So because of that, we have these moments where we have to descend somewhat and, and, and to find our way through this dark room and to feel around. But Hashem expects that we're going to get to the other side and he'll send us a drop of light here, a drop of light here, a drop of light here. So you have to save up. And what happens is, I think it was in the Siva Shalom talked about it with Yosef Hatzadik when he was when he was running. His Aleph, the first Sefer uh, of the Nesiva Shalom in, uh, of the set, is Aleph and base where he is some Maimarim there. And he says over there that Yosef Hatzadik, he, he, he was mamish Finnish. He was chalash. By the time he came that last time, and he had the wife of, of, of Potiphar who was chasing after him, he, he, was, he was weak. He was finished. He was done. All the Mephoshim talk about it. Rashi talks about it. He was finished. And what happens is he was able to run. How? But he had nothing. His hergish was gone. He didn't feel Hashem. When Avram Avinu was going to do the K, they said Hashem left. He didn't feel anything anymore. He yeah. was blidat. Blidat. He didn't have the dot. To know, like we do, before we say, well, I'm not going to eat any more cake or anything. As soon as the cake's there, then the <laughs> dot's gone. He forgot that he said it. He forgot all that, whatever. He has no more power. said everything was gone. But the thing is, is that they worked so much in their Muna and Hashem that the body did it itself. They wow. grabbed so much during that time of light that by the time they faced the time where they felt Hashem was far away from them, they still were able to pull it off because their moon and they had worked it mamish into their bones. Wow. So the whole body did it themselves. So we, we, we have to take advantage of the time where we have that light and that kirvas Hashem and the sweetness and our moon is strong to be able to carry it with us during the dark times. And if you can, Rav Awashid had said this many years ago, I don't know how much he, he's saying it uh, these days, but the Rav had, had always meant that not only a gratitude, but a person should write when Hashem does miracles for you, when you experience Hashem, so that you can always go back to that book and look and say, look, Hashem brought me out. And when I'm in a time yeah. of darkness, a star was He loves those stories. Thank you, To be Hashem. able to go back yeah. and be like, wow, Hashem, you, you, you helped me so I can hold on to it even in this dark time. That's it. The thank you, Hashem. I see miracles. That's... That almost turns the darkness into light. Always. Just, just, just by thanking Hashem. And I remember Gedalia talking about, we always, always have to be on like a soldier ready for the, for the battle situation. Absolutely. And that's the training we're doing in the good times. Right, right. So he sees it that way as well. I mean, it's amazing answers. I really appreciate it. But a big part of our class is music. <laughs> and, you know, being that you're a, a rapper, a hip-hop artist, and, you know, we, we always feel like we, the studio asking, do you think he'll do a song? You know, we always feel nervous <laughs> to put you on the spot. Um, being that this is your art and it's something very, I mean, one of the things I, I saw what was nice to see you in a different context was Be Heard. It was a session you did before Pesach. I think I helped organize it with uh-huh. Ben Sian Klatsky. And it was nice to see you like commenting on musicians mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. publicly giving feedback. And there was a, a new group of artists that are, you know, trying 
and uh, it just the Shizale, I think, have been putting it out in little sections. They just yeah, put out a new nice. one, a uh, proper edited version. It was really nice. And really nice. It's just amazing to see you in different contexts. So, we, but we do want some music. So, yeah. how do we? How do we? What's, <laughs> how are you going to do this? I mean, we can put we can put on the video after because this is uh, recorded. We can put a video on after. Yeah, right? lifted. Not, not so prepared. I Lifted is the song we should put out there? Yeah, we should put out Lifted. Show, show the Lifted video. The full video, the yeah. official video. Yeah, so, you know, we're working really hard right now on new music. Let's um, hear. You know, a new song is coming out. I'm trying to make it make sure that it's every four to six weeks. Nice. And something like that, that we're releasing a new song. So we already have the next video in the bag. It's ready to come. Oh. And then I think I'm going to shoot like four four videos over two days or something wow. like that. Any insights of the that. videos coming? Huh? Are you allowed to say? Uh, no, I have one video. It's called uh, Human Greatness with a wow. wonderful singer named uh, Dustin Paul. He's amazing. Wow. And uh, we shot this video in New York. Same time we did Lift It, the next day we shot this video. Dustin Poo is a new uh, name. Yeah, yeah. So he's, you'll, you'll hear him. That, you know, for a lot of us haven't, you know, heard of him that much. But he's... It, not not because of his talent, because the guy's out of this world. He's amazing. So we have a beautiful song coming out. So and then I have that, and um, obviously you mentioned the HBO series that's uh, that's being worked on right now. So uh, which is something I'm I'm very involved with, very in caution. It's a it's a drama comedy based nice. on my life story, um, and we we were approached by a lot of different people. And you know, even back when 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 you were more involved. Yeah. Um, you know, being approached by a lot of different people from Queen Latifah and other groups sure. on Netflix and different things from my story. And um, what felt comfortable about this one was that we were doing comedy. So uh, my, my desire was that it wasn't going to leave anybody with opinions. You know, nice. like, you know, I feel like a lot of uh, media and television today is all about leaving people, having an agenda to yeah. leave, leave, a, leave an opinion. And my, my job yeah. is only to you know, inspire people. And if I could make them laugh through inspiration, then that would be my goal. So as long as in the, in the series is, is, you know, is, 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 is underway. Um, but the only thing is, is that the only way I know that you'll see it is if it's inspirational and it's funny. If it's not inspirational, it's funny. It's not coming out. So, wow. so we're going to have to pray a lot. That it <laughs> comes together. Will there be music together. incorporated? Like, yeah. The, the, the music I'm, I'm doing all the soundtrack, the music oh, board and, you know, um, it doesn't spend a whole lot of time in my past life, so that's why it's not really a documentary. Also, so you know, it's sort of like the the major parts embellished comedy of of you know what you have to experience as being African American coming from the neighborhood and the place I grew up, and then being in the world of Hasidus, like trying to navigate yourself. So, uh, hopefully, we're able to do it with with class and in a way that it should be a kiddush Hashem and nice. everything like that. That's what we're working on. So. I have a question. Would it be like, remember Eddie Murphy style where he used to do all the characters himself? <laughs> that's that's what I'm pushing for. That's you know, like, I for. remember you did a Purim story like with right. Yosef back yeah. in the day and you're standing there. Right, like, right, right. So that's 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 the hope. I really, that's funny you brought that up because yeah. I sent that in like, you know, this is really something that I want to do is sort of like you know, all these different parts. I don't know if I, w I will be me. There were some stipulations that I set forth in order for me to actually play my own part yeah um they know what that is so if they adjust those things then we can do it but if not then Amazing. you know i i'd i'd probably only be playing other people you know so we'll see what happens well, that's something that in Muna clash we should incorporate a bit more comedy i think <laughs> yeah, yeah no yeah. i think it's needed you Maybe know like, some comedians here yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 bring a comedian i don't know if there are there are good jewish comedians I'm nowadays sure, i'm sure there are. you come across some when you're traveling and the tours like modi and all these guys yeah i see modi all the day yeah, i see him at a few different events actually yeah. recently and uh elon gold and yeah, so there's a few different guys out there. And there's a lot of guys in the back that really write comedy. They're not stand-up comedians, but they, yeah. they write comedy and stuff. I'm like sure that. a lot of the writers are Jewish as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In Hollywood and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So We've got the the power of the mouth and pen, you know? Right. So, But the ultimate thing is, yeah, you know, new content. I've been really going back. And, you know, you mentioned the podcast earlier also, yeah. too, um, which we, we're now in-house. We, we're a part of a wonderful network called Soul Shop. Nice. Um, which which was awesome, but we you know I kind of want to go in a different way, and the way that I'm doing the doing the podcast and the content and different things like that. You and got a name yet? So new name? I, I don't have a new name, but there will be a new name. I'm going to announce it very new soon. New flow. That's new, what we're calling this class. It's definitely so. going to be a new flow. It's gonna it's gonna yeah. be a new flow. 
Amazing. Um, so, but I'm very, very excited about that. So hopefully I'll start. How did you those. find just doing the podcasting world? Because it is a new like uh, channel, like to interview others. Like, yeah, to be interviewed. It, was, it was very interesting. Yeah. It, 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 there was a part of it that was fun because you're on the other side, being able to interview other people. And then there's the the other other challenge of it, of you know, constantly coming up with questions that are interested for the person that don't sound the same, that are not the sure. same. So there's definitely some some challenges to it. And you know, not everybody that you're interviewing you knew about before you did. You know, especially when you're part of a network, and so you're getting introduced to people. So you only have a little bit of time sometimes to read up on them sure. um, before you actually have the interview. So. Um, so you know it, it has it definitely has its challenges. I mean, that's always a big thing. You know, like a, nowadays, you see the podcast platforms has really taken off as a big avenue of right. media, uh -huh. as well as all the short form stuff. Right. And we've asked this before because obviously we want to try and get Muna to all these places. Right. That's a big hope. You know, we're trying to get this right. campaign of loving everyone unconditionally from Avorish. Obviously, the Universal Garden of Muna. We want to get this out there, and right. all the Garden of Muna series, all our website, everything. So could you give us any like guidance a little bit from your experience now you've been a bit more out in the in the mainstream media market like how are they managing to get people's attention when there's such a overload of content more so than one ever of, One of the things that I've been able to discover for myself is um what I tried to discover was who my audience was I was asked for many years right like who's your audience? Like who's your audience? Who's your audience? Everybody wants to know. Like because Shiva Barkham said, the uh, Russian Shiva said they can't listen to me. Like mm -hmm. who's who's your guy? Who are you who are you trying to reach out to? What's your what's your thing? And how many people stop you? And say can I have a picture with you? My yeah. puppy loves you. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to figure. out. And I never thought about this because it was never shtick by me. Mm -hmm. Hashem revealed to me this is what I should be doing in the world. I, I'm, I'm a kusha. I'm close to Sadiq and Mavaru. She gave me a big uh, commission. That, you know, this is what you need to be doing. So I, I wasn't so confused about what I was supposed to be doing, and I didn't think I needed to think about my audience. But one of the things is that one of the reasons why I felt like I I needed to discover who my audience was is because I need to discover who I am. And naturally, a person can start to know more about yourself by the people that are drawn to you. And this is a big lesson in life. If a person starts to realize that you have a lot of people in your life that are not good for you then something about your energy is drawing these type of people to you sometimes they, they, they throw you off and you'll for sure have that but you have to think of you know what type of people are drawn towards you um obviously if they're drawn towards these classes people are drawn towards amuna they want they want light they want different things like that and one of the things i discovered about uh, my audience was that these were people that were like-minded like me also you know believe believe in, in family believe in you know, uh, you know, values and and and, and Amuna and the closest to Hashem. You know, we did a show. I think we started off this past Hanukkah tour in in Dallas, and there was almost as many non-Jews that signed up for it as there wow. were Jew, Jews. They find it was over. You know, two, was this two the bright lights people, or think, in about. summer? It's the bright lights. Yeah, this past uh, that was Chabad. Past Hanukkah. Yeah, it was Chabad over there. Two thousand people. Came, yeah. yeah, so it was a beautiful, beautiful concert. Yeah, I saw the videos. But it's I started amazing. to think about it, even when you talk to the non-Jewish people, they're stopping you, and I started yeah. getting stopped more and more by people that were even you know yeah. that were not Jewish, and and just to hear what they're saying, what everything was about inspiration. You inspire sure. me. This was so uplifting. This was so, so that's who my audience. Is. That's what they want for me. So that made me stop and assess everything I'm doing and say, hold on, I need to reevaluate because a shim. The audience is bigger than just the audience. These are the neshamas that you put my world into to be mashpia on. Mm -hmm. Even if it's only a small little bit, it's not just the audience. These are Hashem, These are my people. These are these. Are, you know, and I'm their guy. So I need to be able to give over give over their life. So that's the first thing: is evaluation. What is my audience? What do they like? What are they? And I don't have all the 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 back end Google analytics, analytics to find out or whatever. Yeah. So I have to do real survey. I have to ask people. Yeah. I have to see what they're saying to me. I have to take even the negative and the good and see what people are saying to me. So that that was a big help for me. And what I what I notice is is that so many people are just dying for light and inspiration. And 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 we're in a, in a time and a generation right now where everything we we've gone through the COVID experience of everybody seeing that uncertainty happens. And then and then at that point everybody now knows no matter what you know, political side, you know, nobody trusts the news. Nobody trusts it, you know, so there's nowhere for us to run to feel like we have yeah. some type of security. So everybody's looking for more Amuna, more light. So I think that the content is there is just finding the appropriate platforms. Podcasts are very huge today because everybody is 
you know, on the move, on the fly. They either want to watch it. I think the, you know, what we're doing here is beautiful. The discussion. Addition, the, yeah. the discussion. Of, you get of, to real places. Of real life yeah. things. And, yeah. and, and, and what people want more than anything, and I talked about this with Jack on my podcast, sure. was uh, is honesty. People want to be, yeah. hon they want honesty, and they want to feel like I'm not the only one going through what I'm going through. Sure. And when people feel alone, that's that's when depression kicks in and all these other things. When a person feels like, I'm mamish alone. Nobody else feels me, and so that's why you're seeing, you know, f you know. Fortunately, more uh, people like you know yeshivas like Fishers. You have sure. Ravalsh's Fisher. The whole thing yeah. is honest. There's some yeshivas called Nakuda Toba, and they have and they have that Indian. But there's a lot of other yeshivas. That's the whole in Indian is that they bring out the Nakuda Toba, the good point in the person, sure. through a way of honest, being sure. honest with yourself. Where am I holding? What type of individual am I? So I think that there's wonderful platforms podcasts and everything i don't think nothing's not happening over here so i think sure. that uh they stay on the right course amazing so there there is a potential for us right now being the way the world is to really impact and bring a moon global would you be able to say anything like just if you could hold it up the booklet Absolutely. and just just give a little push to like reading by the way <laughs> yeah trying to in between the sure. in, in between the how's talking. it how's it work like in terms of getting that love unconditional towards all of humanity you know this is ravorish it's, it's almost revolutionary T teaching people that making events are very important and building all these you know uh unity platforms i'm very much into unity personally as i'm sure you've seen in my email and all right, my other stuff right, right. united souls someone asked you what's my mission statement i said two words united souls right just bring right. people together that's it that's right. all i really very care true. about very true but um that's very true of you but so that you have to know what your mission statement is and some we talked about that here before but Rav Orish's mission statement of bringing a Muna is teaching us that we to come to love of other people we really have to pray on it it's not yeah, going to happen just from happen it's so, very very hard yeah. and the Rav has been speaking about this for years it's just only now that he he was able to see that he needed to speak on this more uh, through what Hashem revealed to him which I have no doubt about it that this mamish came from Shemaim um, but the, it, it's even deeper. I, I, I had to think about this, and Hashem helped me out with this one time also too, through my learning from the Rav and learning through the form of the Rav, is that I, you know, I had a thought one time. Everybody has somebody that you can't stand, <laughs> right? <laughs> or or you, 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 you have certain personalities that this person just mamish rubs me the wrong way. Or maybe, whether there's an actual conflict or there's no real actual conflict there. But one of the things is that, that, that really helped me was I stopped one day and I thought I was somewhere and I, and a person that was in there that we, we don't, our energy doesn't, doesn't mesh. And I stopped and I thought, and I said that that person over there, that's Hashem's baby. And Hashem is head over the hills in love with that person. <laughs> Who am I to have a problem with that person? Who am I? Now, I can have that for a moment, but I took that with tears to the fields and talking to Shima, but like, it was such a, a big thing for me that I was able to really be, be macabre that thought, to, to, to be able to bring down a thought like this. I don't know. I think it came from the Rob's Sephora and how much he's always talked about having Havas Israel. And, 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 and the reason why he's loved by so many is because of that love that he gives to so many other people. So I think that the, the biggest thing is, is, you have to dive in and take these things to the fields really honestly on loving people unconditionally. That thought for me was like the, one of the, the biggest things in the world like, that made me realize that I have no right like Hashem. And, and so when I was facing my own challenges, uh, it's, been, it's been public now. I had a lot of trouble getting my, my, one of my kids in the school. Particular was very, it's very actually hard. the main climax of Wikipedia. If you go there, really, <laughs> yeah, I think it needs to be updated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've gone so further from that, <laughs> right? Yeah, so so beyond that. Yeah. And so I, I, I definitely had had a very very tough time. But so many people afterwards came up to me and says, "How can you continue? Like you know, with everything you like so still gun hole about a shim and everything like that. And look at what what's happening to you. Look how sure. people are treating you. And I went through a rough time." We're trying, and uh, my, my kids are in beautiful schools now. Shout out to the whole Beit Shemesh cover. I love Beit Shemesh. But I, 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 I had a tough time, and I thought, there was two thoughts for me. First off, the first thing was, I thought that, like, I, I came to, to Judaism 
with Hashem. Like that's what I came with. I didn't come in with the most notes with the schools. I didn't come in with anybody mm-hmm. else. I didn't come. I came because I fell in love with Hashem, and Hashem brought me here, and I was able to see the light from Hashem. So the only person that's going to push me out of here would be Hashem. It's not going to be because of other people. Number two, one of my biggest. Insp-